According to TK Uman, there is considerable confusion surrounding the concepts of nationalism, ethnicity, citizenship, state, class, and race. This confusion not only weakens academic analyses, but also contributes to violent conflicts and political discrimination. In his work, Citizenship, Nationality, and Ethnicity, Uman attempts to clarify the definitions and relationships among these terms and highlights the advantages of greater clarity. Uman's fundamental argument is that, in the distant past, peoplehood was based on the connection between territory and language. Peoples who maintained this link constituted nations. However, ethnicity emerges when this connection between culture and territory is broken, often due to migration. Nationals are considered insiders, while ethnics are viewed as outsiders. Importantly, neither ethnicity nor nationality is inherently tied to states. Membership within a state is solely a matter of citizenship. Uman's perspective emphasizes that citizenship has the potential to serve as a platform for equality, where competing claims rooted in national and ethnic differences can be reconciled. His stance aligns with Habermas' concept of constitutional patriotism. However, Uman criticizes countries like Germany for linking citizenship to nationality without fully exploring the reasons behind this connection and its normative consequences. Moreover, Uman attempts to debunk the idea of the nation-state by illustrating that even seemingly strong candidates like Great Britain, France, and Germany do not achieve a perfect coincidence between the nation and the state. However, he does not delve into why the nation-state link continues to dominate political life and collective identity, despite imperfect fits. Additionally, he does not thoroughly analyze nationalism or ethnic solidarity as projects nor does he explore the social, organizational factors that sustain collective identity and social solidarity. Uman makes a valuable contribution by identifying the processes of ethnification and nationalization, resulting from the rupture between territory and speech community. Ethnification involves defining certain collectivities as outsiders, and accentuating their cultural differences for political and economic discrimination, while nationalization occurs when people voluntarily associate with those of supposed common ancestry, relocate to be with them, and assert their membership in the nation. Homogenization programs aim to align a country's people with a national pattern, and are also influenced by this rupture. Throughout his work, Uman frequently employs the term authentic to describe claims to a territory, typically referring to those with longer historical connections. However, he does not provide a consistent metric based on the length of occupancy. Notably, Uman does not fully acknowledge that no perfectly primordial peoples exist and that all ancestors have moved at some point. While he briefly acknowledges the fluidity of identities over time, he does not explore this aspect analytically, or consider the various ways in which national identities can be constructed. He tends to emphasize that some identities endure because they evoke a familiar or primordial element. While Uman recognizes situations where two nations may share the same homeland and compete for dominance, he does not acknowledge that the creation of distinct national boundaries around homelands is a characteristic of modern states. This omission undermines his view that the state is irrelevant when understanding the concept of the nation. The book suggests that the nation-state may be an idealized notion, but nationality is not neutral in the modern world, particularly due to the nationalist project that links nations and states. Uman's arguments sometimes blur the distinction between questioning the legitimacy of a phenomenon 
and denying its existence, he tends to reason in categorical absolutes and dismiss statistically significant correlations by highlighting exceptions. For instance, he downplays the significance of race and religion in defining nations by declaring them irrelevant rather than considering them as potential factors in a multivariate explanation. Territorian language, while influential, might be more appropriately viewed as contributing factors, rather than definitive definitions of a nation. The book benefits from a comprehensive global perspective and provides a wide range of examples to support its arguments. However, some of these examples are taken out of historical context drawn from a dated selection of sources and subject to questionable interpretative summaries. This undermines their value as solid support for the overall argument. For instance, the assertion that Zionism is solely based on 2,500 years of yearning for an ancient homeland may oversimplify the complexities of the Zionist movement, which was also influenced by social and political factors. In the context of the European flowering of nationalism, the claim that Swahili was rejected as a national language lacks information about the specific country in question, making it difficult to assess the validity of the statement. Similarly, attributing Slovenian nationalism entirely to economic grievances without considering other factors could present an incomplete picture. Another concern is the lack of reference to recent historical and sociological research when discussing British nationalism and the place of colored immigrants in Britain, ignoring more current analyses, such as those by Linda Coley, Stuart Hall, and Paul Gilroy may limit the depth and accuracy of the book's insights. Uman's reliance on certain scholars, such as Walker Connor, Rupert Emerson, and Anthony Smith, is noticeable, while overlooking the influential arguments of scholars like Benedict Anderson, Rogers Brubaker, Partha Chatterjee, Laia Greenfeld, and Michael Mann, may weaken the comprehensiveness of the analysis. Additionally, Uman's interpretation of Ernest Jellner's views on the interchangeability of nation and class categories is misleading, as Jellner actually posited that they are more likely to fuel political mobilization when they coincide. The book's vision of a humane world where citizenship promotes equality and differences do not lead to exclusion or conflict is commendable. However, it is challenging to accept that conceptual confusion and wrong labeling were the primary causes of tragedies like the one in Bosnia, as Uman asserts. Rather, numerous complex and multifaceted factors, including passions, interests, fears, and ambitions, played significant roles in motivating tendentious labels and identity claims.